we, we can hear okay, you. Well, yeah. so, um, Go Rick, let me let me officially introduce you and thank you um, for presenting at this year's iMeet. Um, this I think is going to be quite a popular uh, session, um, and I'm glad, really glad that we've sorted out the technical issues, um, and I know everybody's looking forward to it. So, thank you again, and. Uh, if you're ready, Vinny, before, um, I, before I let you go, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. I think I'm still missing one thing. Um, when I was testing this out, I had the ability to um, to share my screen. I can't see my screen share button now. Is it um, because I'm all flustered from all this trouble, or am I? Okay. I don't know why. I can't right, there you go. I just I just made you a presenter, so that button oh, sure. should appear now. Okay, great. All right, so are we ready to start then? Yeah, we're ready. We're ready if you are. Okay, fantastic. Um, look, hello everybody. Sorry about the little bit of uh, technical difficulty we had. Um, my name is Greg Egan. I'm here to to do the introduction to grading in the gradebook session. Um, the reason that I decided to do this was uh, I've been working around Brisbane in Moodle and and a few other platforms, but a lot of Moodle over the last few years and I, I work mainly with high schools and I find that a lot of them don't uh, don't really get into the grade book they don't seem to understand what happens there or, or how it works and uh, and particularly the aggregation of the grade book um, they seem to have great difficulty with that and so they uh, well, I think they make not all that much use of it so I thought that that would be a good topic to do and uh, and I'm not trying to go into the entirety of the gradebook in this uh, this 45 minute session. What I'm trying to do is just uh, just show people the uh, the simple ways in which um, grading in the gradebook work. And uh, and I guess it's uh, I'm aiming this at a a beginner to intermediate audience, which um, I am hoping we've got lots of people in that area. When I've been to Moodle Moots before, there seem to have been lo lots of people in the beginner to Intermediate area, so I'm um, I'm hoping that I'm uh, aiming at the right audience and that you guys have chosen the right thing. So um, can I get maybe a few people send through some messages to just let us know uh, if that's what you're looking for, or is there anything in particular that you are looking for with the the grade book? Okay, great, great. So we're saying um, Jenny doesn't grade. And Dot loves the gradebook, but not sure how it works with groups. Uh, Dot, I'm not specifically aiming at that, but uh, but it, it's really not difficult if you if you do set up the groups, um, you can use them to to view like class groups and so forth through the gradebook. So um, I've used it, for example, where a school has four classes all doing the same thing, and if we set the classes up into groups and populate those groups, then we can look at the the gradebook. Just as the classes, rather than the uh, the entire cohort. Um, Frederick has said something about different kinds of aggregations with examples. Yeah, I have got that in the presentation. Um, I haven't tried to go into huge detail of every kind of aggregation, but uh, but in particular, I'm looking at the different kind of kinds of means, like the simple weighted mean versus the mean of grades and the weighted means. Um, Okay, so thanks guys. Um, well, let's get started. I'll just move on to the next slide. That's uh, just introducing myself, Greg Egan. As I mentioned before, I work as an e-learning consultant in Brisbane, mostly with high schools, sometimes with, uh, with training colleges as well, but mostly the high schools. And this is what I've planned for this session, um, tracking student progress. So I'm looking to be introducing people to different ways that they can keep track of student progress through grading in the gradebook. Uh, first, the grader report, which is the main report or the main part of the gradebook that you'll see when you go into grades. Um, secondly, grade categories. So we can categorise grades into, into different categories. For example, you might want to keep track of how well people or your students go on quizzes versus assignments or you might want to, to categorise things into the, the sections of the course or the topics of the course that you've set up. So you can do any of that and uh, and see summary values as to how they've been going in those areas. I would, uh, I'd like to show you also how to use scales. 
So some of you may have set up scales before. Uh, for those who, who don't understand what I mean by that, you may have noticed if you've ever set up an assignment before that by default the grading is pretty much numeric. You can uh, set the assignment to be out of 10 or out of 20 or anything up to 100. But what you can do is also set up your own scales. Certainly um, in the schools I work with here in Queensland in Australia, the the teachers don't tend to grade numerically very much. Um, as a general rule, they would grade in A plus to E minus sort of scales. Uh, there's also some satisfactory and unsatisfactory, and there's uh, there's also competent and not yet competent for the vocational area. Um, do you guys do that? Do people work in scales like A plus to E minus or anything like that rather than numeric grades? Uh, yes, says Dot. Okay, so great, we've got a got a few people coming through with yeses on those. Now, outside of what I'm going to be able to do in in this session, you can go a little bit further and set up things uh, things like outcomes, where you can create separate grades for each criteria on an assessment piece. And again, I'm not sure exactly how people do uh, do everything around the world, but certainly here in Queensland, we more often than not we're grading on. Um, a number of criteria, so an assessment piece might have three different criteria and the students will tend to get a separate grade for each one rather than one overall grade and that. And by default Moodle doesn't really cater for that but certainly you can set it up that it can, can be doing um, that as well. So scales is an area I'd like to have a look at. Um, as someone mentioned before, aggregation of grades, we'll go into a, a few of the ways that you can do that. Um, the fifth one I've got there is letter grades, and it's probably easy to um, to confuse that with scales. Letter grades and scales aren't really the same thing. Um, with letter grades, we can actually take the numeric grades that students get, and we can make them appear as letters. And those those letters would typically be A to E or A plus to E minus, but you could do something else like uh, pass, merit, credit distinction, all those kinds of things with letters as well. You can do it with scales, but they're not exactly the same thing. I'll try to clarify how they're different. And hopefully we'll also get time to have a look at one of the uh, one of the newer things in Moodle. It's not brand new, but it, uh, it is one of the newer things, and that's some of the advanced grading we can do with, with rubrics. Um, does anyone out there use rubrics or is familiar with that term? It's, uh, it's something that's coming in here in, in Brisbane and, and Queensland but it didn't used to be part of our, uh, our vocabulary here, but certainly I'm getting lots of yeses and, uh, and a, f a few just starting there. So yeah, well, that's, as I said, a relatively new thing in Moodle that you can grade with rubrics, but it's, uh, it's very powerful and I'll have a, a look at that with you as well. Okay, um, so moving along, we'll go in straight into the grader report. All right, so the grader report is the main grade book. Um, when you go into grades, it's the first thing that you'll see will be the, the grade book. And as you can see on my slide, I've got an example grader report, and I have a couple of students in here, um, Pam Pupil and Sam Student. Uh, you'll notice when I show you my live one now, I've got the same students, but their names have changed a little, mainly because I didn't want them both starting with the same letter, and you'll see why in a minute when I sort them. Um, but there are my students, and you can see that there's uh, there's a few assessment pieces have been set up for them. At that that point in time, they didn't have any grades, but uh, but they've got some grades now. So what I'll show you is if I can share my screen on my desktop, and then going into a uh, a local Moodle I've got on this machine, and I'm going to go into the physical science course. I'm going in as Terry Teacher. Okay, so this is a little bit of a test bed course that I was setting up. And if I scroll down, you'll see there's uh, there's a few assessments there. There's an elements drag and drop. I did that a while ago. I think it was created with hot potatoes. And there's a um, assignment and there's a Moodle quiz there as well. And if I go now into the grade book, and for those who haven't done it before, it's just going into your settings. It's under course administration and you go into grades. I'll pop back into big blue button shortly just to see if anyone's typing any questions. 
but right because right now I can't see. I'm just looking at the uh, the Moodle Grader report, and hopefully that's what you're seeing too. So now uh, you can see my two students are Pam Appleton and Sam Pupil, and they're enrolled and they've uh, they've handed in assignments. Or Pam's wasn't very good by the looks of it, and they've done the quizzes and they've got some some grades in there. And you can see that uh, some of them are numeric grades and some of them aren't. These the assignments actually been graded on a scale. Okay, I've just come back into big blue button and I can see uh, people saying, am I sharing my screen? I may have jumped the gun there a little bit and clicked uh, only one of the two buttons I need to click. I'll just wait for that to come up. All right. Um, I'm thinking you should be able to see my screen now and if I go into Moodle I'll just ask if people could just type whether they can see the, uh, the Moodle grader report now. Alright, getting a couple of yeses there, that's great. So I was just saying here I've got a, a couple of students enrolled in this course, it's Pam Appleton and Sam Pupil and they've got a, a few gradable activities here. We've got assignment one um, an elements drag and drop and a move quiz, quiz number one and they've got some grades for that so the quizzes have some numeric grades and the assignment has a, a grade based on a scale of A to E so you can see the grades are there and moving along just a couple of things that you can do in the grader report that people may or may not be aware of um, when when you've only got a couple of students it's not very difficult to see that student's grade. But when you've got lots of students, it can be a little bit difficult. So um, you might not be aware that you can click in the little blank area of the cell where their name is, and that will highlight the row for that student. So I can highlight and I can click it again to toggle it off. And similarly, I can do the same thing in the columns. So if I want to highlight all of the, the scores for a particular assignment or a particular quiz, I can click on that and it will highlight them all for me. I can click on a student at the same time. It makes it very easy to identify a particular grade. Is this something that people have been doing already? The other thing I wanted to show you in there was just doing some sorting. Right, and, that, and as you'll see, that's actually why I changed the names of my students from Pam Pupil and Sam Student. Um, I just wanted to show that you can sort by their surname or by their first name. Okay, so I've just sorted now on surname descending, so the P before the A, and if I click it again on the surname, and the A's before the P, and if I click on first name, all right. Right now it's in ascending order, the little arrow is going up. If I click on first name again, the S is now before the P, so it's in descending order of first name. Now that's all right in terms of the names, but uh, probably even better when you start to look at their scores. So if I want to see um, the scores in assignment one from best to worst, all right, I can click on that one and, whoops, sorry, I just missed there. Right, click on the arrow and click it again. All right, so it's in descending order now, worst to best. And you can do that on any of your assessment pieces or your course totals, or as we'll see later, you can also do that on category totals. So we're going, going to categorize these grades in a little while as well. All right, so moving on to the grade categories. Uh, you can create categories for all of your grades and that allows you to keep track of student grades for particular parts of your course. So it could be that you want to categorize into the topics and see how people go in each topic, or you might want to do it for different assessment pieces. For example, keep track of how they're going in quizzes versus their how, how they're going in assignments. And you might be able to see a pattern there and say, well, people go really well on the quizzes, but they don't go so well at the assignments and you might start up, start to ask yourself why and whether you need to teach them a little differently or teach them a little better how to do that. 
Okay, so to uh, to set up your categories, just go back to my physical science course and check what those categories were that I created. All right, I have a uh, I've got a topic for the periodic table, so I'm going to create a category for that. And my next one was carbon chemistry. Um, don't ask me any science questions because I'm not really a science teacher. So periodic table and carbon chemistry. Go back to grades. And I'm now going to go into categories and items. And I'm going to add a category at the bottom here. I'm going to call this one periodic table. Notice the aggregation default comes up as simple weight, weighted mean of grades. That'll be important later. I'm just pointing it out to you now. We'll revisit that because that might not be the aggregation that we want. And I'm going to save those changes. All right, so my, my new category has appeared down here, periodic table, and I'll create one more. I think that one was carbon chemistry. And I'll save that one. Okay, so I've got two new categories, but at this stage they haven't got any items in them. So these items up in the the top level, which is physical science, they need to be moved into the right categories. So the way that we do that, well, when you create an assignment or some kind of accessible item, you can choose at that point what the grade what grade category you want to put it in. But we can do it from very easily as well. All you need to do is select the ones that you want to move. So I'll tick these top two. And down the bottom, I'm going to say move selected items to. I'll put them in periodic table. Okay, so those two are now in periodic table. Quiz one is still left out on its own. I'm going to select that one and I'm going to move it to carbon chemistry. And there we go. Quiz number one is down, now down in carbon chemistry. I'm going to save my changes and go back to view. All right, and now we've got this periodic table category and there's a category total for it and we can work out um, how that aggregates well. And I've got a carbon chemistry category with just one thing in it and a category total there as well. Any questions so far about uh, how we categorise those those accessible items. So Nancy, just looking at your question, you found that the faculty confuse the category and the graded item and they add the grades to the category which won't work with the aggregation. Yeah, that's not really the way to do it, is it? Um, are you fairly clear on that though, Nancy? On how we add the grades? Not sure if Nancy's heard that question. I'll keep moving. Also, um, here she is. I'm clear if I can get them clear. Fair enough. I'm aware of the time as well, so we'll, we'll keep moving along. All right, so we can create those categories. Move the items into the categories. All right, and then later we'll look at how we can um, adjust the aggregation of those categories. Before I do that, I want to have a little look at adding scales or custom scales. So as you can see on the, um, on the presentation, the idea is that you might want to grade students using scales rather than the numeric grades. And the examples I've got there are ABE, satisfactory, unsatisfactory, competent, not yet competent. I've got high distinction to gross fail. There's lots of examples that you could use there. So you can create the custom scales yourself as a teacher within your course. And that's what I'm aiming at this presentation at really is, is the teacher. Some of you, however, may be administrators and you can add them as standard scales yourself if you're an administrator. You can actually do that in the same way that the teachers are um, 
are doing this. And I'm just seeing a question come up. Can it scale be applied to the course total? Um, yes, it can. So the file can be included in the course total. And we'll see that a bit more when we get to aggregations. But, but yes, you've just got to be a little bit careful about how that happens. And just be confident that you know how the course total is being aggregated. And hopefully I'll clarify that for you today. So to add a customer to the teacher, we're going to go to the gradebook and then we're going to click scales or depending on how you're accessing the gradebook, uh, it might be scales view and at the bottom of the page and then we're going to click on add a new scale. All right, so I'll just go back to there to do that. All right, and when I said depends on how you're accessing the gradebook, there's two, well, kind of three ways that it might appear for you. You might have these tabs on the top that I've got. Okay, or you might have the drop down list, or you might have both as I've got. So, uh, so you kind of have to work out which one you've got. And um, if you're an administrator, you can ask your administrator that can adjust that as well as to which of these is used. All right, so I'm just going to go into scales here on my tab. And I've got a bunch of standard scales here. That means they've been created by an administrator. And the administrator has said these are standard scales, okay, which means everybody's able to access them throughout the site rather than being limited to the course that where they were made. So I'm going to add a new scale. And I'm going to call this the GF2HD scale. And I'm going to put in my scale items. Right, they're separated by commas. All right, so that's my scale. And just um, do take note of the fact that I started with the lowest one. All right, if I start with high distinction and move down to gross fail, it's all, all good as long as you don't want to do any aggregation. All right, when you start aggregating, it's going to look at the one that you put in first as being the lowest. Okay, I'm going to save those changes. I could have put a description in if required. Just going back to the big blue button and seeing if there's any questions about adding the scale. Okay, dot says... That's where you came unstuck. Um, is it clear now, Dot? Is it? Did you perhaps put them around the wrong way and put the uh, the highest one first? Yeah, yeah. I probably did that the first few times as well. So uh, I'm sure lots of us have done that. But um, but putting the lowest one first does work out your aggregation value. You're not happy students. I can understand that too. Uh, Often I, I'll say to people, if you don't understand how the aggregation's working, hide it, you know, turn it off so people don't don't see it until you're confident that it's it's giving you the right thing. Okay, so we can add those scales, and um, again, not too sure of everyone's experience here, but uh, just in terms of how you use those scales once you've created them, when you go to create an accessible item such as an assignment, you can choose your scale from there. And you might be familiar with the uh, the 1 to 100 scale that is normally in Moodle. If you look above that, above no grade, you can see all the, the scales that we've added, the custom ones, and then the, uh, the standard scales as well. So if I was creating an assignment now, I could add that scale in that I've just created, and, and I could use that to grade the students. All right, now, once we've got things like scales happening, I have separated scales and letters. I'm coming back to letters. It made more sense for me to do the uh, the aggregation before getting into the letters side of it. Okay, so the, uh, the grade aggregation means how the grades are totaled. So how are the course totals worked out? It's also the same for, uh, for category totals, but uh, for many people, the first thing they want to work out is how the course totals are worked out. It is very flexible, 
and it can be quite complex. It doesn't have to be complex, but it depends on exactly what you want to do with it. So for this pre introductory presentation, I'm just going to look at the more simple level, that is the common aggregation methods. So we're going to look at three different aggregation methods, and that's the, uh, the simple weighted mean and the mean of grades and the weighted mean of grades. All right, and see how they, they differ from each other. So firstly, simple weighted mean. So simple weighted mean is actually the, the default method of aggregation. Um, I'll go back to my grade book and just have a look at, at the view. So when we're talking about aggregation, I just want to be clear, um, we're talking about things like category totals and in particular the course total. So how do those totals happen? All right. And the aggregation is what's going to give us a clue towards that. Um, so the simple weighted mean assigns weights to each gradable item based on the scale being used. So an assignment of 100 gets a weighting of 100 and a quiz out of 10 gets a weighting of 10. So you want to be quite careful with that. Um, if you're not aware that that's happening, then some things are getting much greater weights than others. Okay, so uh, an assignment on an E to A scale actually gets a weighting of 5. Depends on which aggregation method is being used, actually, but it's, uh, it can be E is 1 up to A is 5, or it can be E is 0 up to A is 4. But either way, it's a, it's a very low weighting. And if you've got a quiz out of 10, 20, or even 100, then that quiz is going to get a very high weighting, and, uh, and it can skew your results. So the simple weighted mean, I think, is something to be a little bit careful with. Um, so I've got an example there. If I've only got, and I'm not sure how well you can see my, uh, my slide there, but if I've only got two assessment pieces, and one is a quiz out of 100, and the other is actually their major assignment, which might actually be worth more, but it's being graded, say, just A to E, then the results will be skewed because the, the quiz out of 100 will be weighted much higher. Okay, so the uh, so you've got to be careful and maybe or probably choose a, a different method and, uh, and get your grades or your course totals right that way. That in the... Uh, in the grade book itself. Okay, if I go to categories and items, all right, you can see in my aggregation I've got simple weighted mean of grade in all of these, and if I change those um, those aggregation methods, I will get different results in my category and my course totals. If you have a look at what we've got here now, and go back and change from simple weighted mean of grades to say, for example, a mean of grades. So that's the, that means there's no weighting. All right, this is just a, just a mean. Right, and again, for people who aren't aware, um, a mean is just your most common uh, term for the word average. For most people, when they say an average, they're talking about a mean. It means we add up the number of uh, the total of something and divide by the number of, in this case, accessible items. So if we've got two assessable items, we've got a total and we divide by two, and that's that's the average or what we call the mean. So I've just changed this to mean of grades, and I'm going to save those changes. All right, and my category total that was 100 before is now 50, all right, which is the average grade. Okay, so they've got, um, if you look at these, an E is basically zero and for the elements drag and drop they've got a hundred percent so the average or the mean is actually 50 there okay so it's worked out quite differently to how the simple weighted mean is okay so just looking at my slide then on the mean of grades um, the mean of grades method just adds up all the grades and divides by the number of gradable items there's no weightings attached to it so for example Pam Appleton at 100% on a quiz out of 100, and an E on an assignment on an E to A scale. Now, what actually happens? And you probably, perhaps, only need to be aware of this. You know, it's not something you'd think about all the time. But um, 
being aware of how this works, the, the grades are normalised to a number between 0 and 1. Okay, so the, uh, the 100 out of 100 becomes a 1. The E on an A to E scale actually becomes a 0. So the two are added together, 1 plus 0 equals 1, and then it's divided by the number of accessible items, that is 2, so we get the 50% that you just saw. Alright, so that was 0, 100, divided by 2, and that gave us our 50. Alright, so again, a very different result than if we'd used a simple weight of means. Now, the other thing you can do um, is you can have a weighted mean. So you can apply weightings, but set them yourself rather than the, the simple weighted mean, which gets its um, gets its weightings from the maximum grade available for that that piece. So if it's if 100 is the maximum grade available, then in a simple simple weighted mean, it gets 100 as its weighting. Well, you can actually set the weightings yourself, and that's the next one we look at. So the weighted mean of grades is like this. Using the weighted mean of grades, we can assign a weighting to our own gradable items. By default, a weighting of 1 is assigned to each gradable item. So when, when you first turn it on, it will give an equal weighting to each item. In that way, it would be the same as just a normal mean because that's equal weighting. However, if we can now adjust the weightings to reflect the importance of particular items, we might say the quiz's weighting remains at 1, but if the, major, if the assignment is a major assignment, we might change its weighting to 3. In that, in that case, the quiz result would be one quarter of the grade, and the assignment would account for the other three quarters. So we're giving it a much higher weighting that way. And uh, again, I'm not sure how well you can see this slide, but, um, but I've got the assignment 1 set to a weighting of 3, the elements drag and drop activity set to 1, Right, so how that affects Pam down the bottom here, she did really badly on the major assignment. Even though she did well on that elements drag and drop activity, she ends up with a category total of, of 25. All right, because the elements drag and drop wasn't particularly highly weighted. It was only one quarter of it. And the E she, she got on the, uh, the major assignment, that really counted as zero. All right, so she ends up with 25% as her category, as her category total. Now you could extrapolate that and say, you know, even if you don't have categories, the course total is, is worked out the same way. Okay, so I've just got categories to split things up so that I can, uh, I can simplify it down to just a couple of assessment pieces there, but the same logic holds for your course total as what I'm showing you there as a category total. So uh, if I go back to Moodle and go to my categories and items, I'm going to take this periodic table category and I'm going to change it to a weighted mean of grades. All right, when I do that, they are both, well, all of my assessment pieces are given equal weightings. I'm going to take assignment one and say that's actually worth 1.0 but 3.0. And I'll leave the element drag and drop as the 1.0. Save those changes. And then when I go back to view, all right, there it is. Pam's got the E here, which counts for nothing really, and the elements drag and drop 100. But that's only really worth a quarter of the grade, so she ends up with the category total for that category of 25 or 25%. Okay, I'm just going back and looking at the question. Um, Nancy, no, they don't have to cut it to total 100. Uh, I think you can make them total 100, but it's it's of no significance. Um, as you saw in the example I just did, or the one that's on your screen now, if well, by default they will all be given a weighting of 1, and you can just use multipliers of 1 to say which is the most important. So in this simplified example, um, the assignment 1 being 3, and the elements drag and drop being one, that means assignment one is worth three times as much as the other assessment. And because there's only the two of them, it'll end up being that assignment one's worth 75% or three quarters of the grade. 
and the Elements Dragon drop is worth 25% or one quarter of, of the grade. Okay, so that's the weighted mean. Again, I do have my eye on the clock. There's a couple more things to, to get through here. Um, and those, I think, are the most common aggregation methods. All right, there are other ways that you can do it and, uh, and you can get into calculations and set up much more complicated things. But I think if you've got an understanding of those three things at least, um, you're a much better chance of um, of getting this to work properly. And, and you really do, I think, need to understand any total that the students are seeing. If you don't understand it, then try hiding it. All right, moving on to letter grades. Now, as I said before, they can be confused with scales, but they're not scales. Um, a, a scale can certainly consist of letters, but a scale is something that we apply directly to an assessment piece. Like if I apply a scale to an assignment, that means I will grade that assignment on that scale. Whereas the letter grades aren't used in that way. We, we grade on another scale, often a numeric one, and then those numbers are later turned into letters as letter grades. So just looking at the uh, at the slide, it says the, the grades can be displayed as letters by going into categories and items and click to edit that particular item and change its grade dis display type to letter. We'll just do that to start with. All right, so I'm going into categories and items. All right, now I've got this um, elements drag and drop and I'm going into edit that. And you can see the grade display type there. Default is real. That means it's going to show whatever it was actually graded as. I want that to show as a letter. Now, we'll look shortly as to how you control what the cutoffs are for each letter, but you can set up a scale of A to E, or you can set up a scale of A plus to E minus, or even um, competent, not yet competent, like you might have to get over 80% to be considered competent, for example. Anything under might be not yet competent for those who work in the vocational area. All right, I'm going to save my changes now. And save changes here. I'll go back and view. All right, my elements drag and drop. Pam's got an A there now. Remember, she got 100%. I don't have an A plus in this, this letter scale, by the way. I shouldn't put the word scale in there. I don't have an A plus in my letters. I've only got up to A, so she's got an A there because her 100% qualifies her for an A. I've done the comp one and it's worked well for her. That's good. Now, I also want to mention that you don't have to change your uh, your grades one at a time to letters. You can also do it uh, do it all at once. So you can go to settings. And in your grade display type, you can change it to letter there. And that will affect your whole grade book. I'm going to save my changes. All right, can you see that? The, uh, all of the, the grades have been shown up as letters now, whether they be quizzes or assignments, category totals, course totals, they're all letters now. So they're all being compared to the cutoffs that I have set up and worked out what letter they should get. That'd be useful to, to people out there. Would, uh, are any of you using, do you use letter grades and would you like your quizzes, for example? to be converted into letters rather than you and the kids only see numbers. Okay, I just want to show you also how to uh, how to set up the cutoffs for the uh, the letter grades as well. Okay, so uh, you can I've shown you how to display as letters, but how do you actually set up the letter grades? All right, well to do that we will go into letters in the grader report in the grade book All right and these are the standard letter grades and cutoffs so um, 93 to 100 is an a 90 to 92.99 is an a minus and so forth 
and you can go in and edit that. If you do that as a teacher, you're editing it just for your course. Right? That an administrator can actually set this up for um, a whole school or a whole institution. So what you need to do now is click on Override Site Defaults and then you can set this up however you want it. Okay, so I might say um, that's actually an A plus if they get 93% or above and that might be my A there and I, I could go down through them all. I won't at this stage but uh, if I just make this change and save it then uh, Pam Pupil or Pam Appleton I think she ended up being should end up with an A plus on that assessment rather than the A that we saw. There she is, she's got the A plus now. Okay, dot works with adults who want to hear the numbers, but the reporting needs to be competent, so she has both. And you can set it up to that as well. Okay, so you can, where I've said um, to show letters, okay, I could have letter with percentage after it or letter with real after it. Or the other way around. Okay, and now I'm starting to see those real numbers come up beside them as well. Okay, just a couple more, a few more slides to go. I'll keep pushing on. Before I do, I guess any questions about the letter grades and how to mark and display? We have a bit of question time left at the end, though. All right. So the last thing that I want to have a look at then was the advanced grading with rubrics, which is a, a reasonably new thing. I think it came in. Uh, Someone might better confirm or deny this. I think it came in in Moodle 2.2. Um, it's the ability to actually have a, an electronic rubric which we um, we can use to click on descriptors of what the student has in particular criteria, and then uh, and then from that the rubric will actually thanks Finny, the rubric will actually work out a grade for us. Okay, so uh, so as I've said in the slide there, one of the newer features is to the ability to use a rubric. Um, I won't read all of that out, but to create the assignment with a rubric, we create the assignment just in the usual way, create an assignment as you normally would. But when you get to grading method, then you can choose rubric there. And then when you get to the bottom of your assignment setup screen, choose save and display, and it will ask you uh, if you want to set up a, a grading form from scratch or if you've got a template set up. In this case, we'll do it from scratch, but you can also save them uh, for later use. All right, so uh, so let's. Oh, thanks, Penny. I hope you did uh, get something out of that. Um, I'm going to go back and set up an assignment and start looking at this rubric. All right, so I'm going to go back to my course. Put my editing on. And go down to carbon chemistry and add an activity in there. That's just a topic that doesn't automatically put it in that category I created before for grading purposes, but we can do that too. Um, I've selected assignment. I'm clicking add to create my assignment. I think this is assignment number two. I won't get too uh, fancy with my description. Play that on my course page. Sometimes I think that I work with school kids. It's good to have something there that just says, "Please upload here." All right, lots of things that we could do there, but we're not going through that today. Okay, so the grade, um, to what scale you want to use, be it numeric or, or one of the other scales or custom scales or standard scales that have been set up. Uh, I'll choose an A to E scale for this one. Now, simple direct grading is actually probably the older or more traditional grading that we've done in Moodle. Um, we've got a couple of new ones here. Now today we're looking at the rubric, so I'll choose that one. And I can choose a grade category there too. I'll, I'll just choose the carbon chemistry one. Um, for the person who asked about group four, you could put people in groups. The groups would have to already be set up, but we could um, choose, say, for example, separate groups here as well. 
that way we could look at the students in their group, groups or their classes. Okay, now for the, the rubric, you can either create from a template or you can create a new one from scratch, and that's what I'm going to do here. All right, and give it a name. Now you might use the same rubric throughout your class or, uh, for particular parts of your class. All right, so I'm saying this is the science experiment rubric and it's to be used to grade science experiments. Then we get to actually creating the rubric itself and we, we start by clicking in the first box and add a criterion in there. So uh, I think I had something for experiments about um, collecting materials. All right, so they're going to get nothing if they haven't collected any materials. And new materials. And good collection of materials. Now if you want to go further, and you quite possibly would, you could add a level there. So they could get something else that's better than that, like something that's worth three points, for example. I'll just do one more criterion. All right, so uh, planning experiment. I'm going to see no plan submitted. They get nothing, of course, for that. Uh, if they had a rudimentary plan, I'd give them a little bit more. I'll just call this one a good plan or a goo plan I almost typed. All right, now obviously that's a very basic rubric, but hopefully uh, we get the idea. I'm just going to go back to Big Blue Button and check for questions. Um, all right, we've got nice uh, potential. Just a picture of any. Um, Now I've not actually printed it out, Judy, but uh, but you can make it viewable by them. Okay, so they can go in to the assignment area and see the rubric and and see what they're going to be graded on. All right, now, and you can see all those sort of options down the bottom here as to whether the user is going to be able to see what they're going to be able to see. All right, now I'm going to save this one and make it ready. All right, now this is my assignment area as normal as if I just come in from the course page to the assignment and wanted to do some grading. Now kids may have, or students may have uploaded their um, their assignments. You can dummy it up anyway, even if, if they have, you can go and grade. So if I view or grade or I want to have a look, say um, Sam Pupil. And here's my rubric. Okay, now Sam, no materials, no plan. All right, so I can put in, and this is one of the um, one of the options that was available when I was setting it up. You're going to be able to put feedback in for each criterion, so I've allowed that to be yes. And I can give overall comments as well. I'm not going to worry about that. All right, and this is Pam, and she's uh, she's a good collection, a good plan. And save the changes. Okay, I'm going to go back to my grade book now. Just, just have a look, actually, I'll, I'll have another little quick look at the rubric. Okay, just notice that uh, 
Sam's got nothing there and nothing there. He gets zero points out of a possible four points. All right, whereas Pam's got four out of four. Okay, so in assignment two, Pam with her four out of four has earned an A plus. All right, because remember we're using, I've told it to show everything as a letter grade, and it's used those cutoffs to set up as well. Whereas uh, Sam has got an F. Uh, Judy, yes, there is a way. I won't be able to cover that here. Um, but you can, I'm sure rubrics are included in the workshop activity. Okay, so you, you could use that to get the peers to do it. I think there is a session on the workshop activity being done in this iMood as well. Um, we have to check the program on that one though. Okay, so just uh, going through those slides on the rubrics. Right, that's just told you all the stuff I've just uh, just been through. Right, how to do the grading, so you can refer to this um, this presentation later if that will be helpful. And I'm sure they're all uh, being uploaded to SlideShare. I've got this uploaded to SlideShare myself. I believe that all of the presentations are being uploaded to SlideShare in an iMoot channel as well. Okay, guys, I'm uh, through all the stuff that I had planned to do. Um, I've just got a couple of references for you there. As I said at the top. If you if you have the time to play, you can work a lot of this thing out, this stuff out, just by uh, getting a couple of dummy students and enrolling them, um, getting them, you know, uh, putting assignments in on their behalf and doing some grading. Uh, but hopefully this has given you a good start. The as far as um, as far as things to refer to, I would start with the Moodle docs. I've got 2.4 docs there. Of course, it's 2.5 now. Uh, but starting with the grade book, and then there's lots more references there. And I also had a look at uh, Rebecca Barrington's book that she's written on the Moodle grade book, which is uh, very thorough and it's very well written. And that's that's worth a look, uh, either in hard copy or the Kindle edition, which is only you know ten dollars or something like that. So definitely worth a look at that. Um, now I've gone most of the way through your question time because of uh, the little technical difficulty at the start, but we have certainly had lots of questions along the way as well, so hopefully I've been able to answer a lot of them. Are there any, um, any um, I was going to say, are there any more questions? Judy, is that, I think that's the gradebook link, doc link on my slide right now. And yes, Moodle Docs is a good first place to look for answers. Uh, I would indeed put a big wrap on some of the books as well, Anna. Um, as I said, Rebecca's book is, is very good for the grade book, but certainly even some of the more general Moodle books have a little section on the, the grade book and they can be very helpful. Oh, it's not hyperlinked. Okay. Um, well, Judy, all I would do is either go straight to Google and type that in, or I'd go to uh, docs.moodle.org and go into managing a Moodle course and there's a, I think it's the second link from the bottom is tracking student progress and I think straight after that it's to the grade book. Oh Vinny's done it for us, thank you Vinny. Guys any further questions that I can help you with? Thank you Stuart, I appreciate that comment. Nancy, I don't, I have the same problem. But, well, an example for uh, why I would use the letters when the scale can do a similar thing is that you can't use a scale on a quiz. Okay, so um, the quizzes are always going to be graded numerically and sometimes you want those to be shown up as letters and if you're doing it for the quiz you might decide to do it for other things as well. Thank you, Judy. I appreciate that comment. I'm, uh, I'm glad I could help. Okay, Linda. Linda, uh, watch it again. That's great.
All right, guys. Well, thank you very much for taking out the time. Nancy, can you lock the top of the gradebook to show the name of the assignment in 2.5? Um, I'm still on 2.4, Nancy, but... Um, thank you, Jenny. And Lindy, thank you for your comment. That's, uh, that's good. I hope it was helpful for you too. Hi, this is Vinny again yeah, from the iMoot team. Uh, I'd just like to say thank you again, um, Greg. That was great. Nice and concise, and I, I really think it helped people. Thanks, Vinny. I appreciate your comment. And, uh, yeah, I'm glad glad we got there in the end with the, uh, with the technical difficulties. Yeah, so, yeah. Unless, you know, that, that's unless there's anybody's got any other further comments, or contributions, um, I'd like to call this session to a close. Um, coming up, we've right, got. Um, sorry, go on, Greg. You're... I was just going to say thanks, Vinny, and thanks everyone to, for uh, taking the time out to uh, to attend the session.